sponsored by CuriosityStream. Get access to my streaming video service, Nebula, when you sign up for CuriosityStream using the link in the description. Late last year, I upgraded the main camera I use for filming these videos to a Canon C200, a cinema camera, which means one built specifically for shooting video, not a still camera that also happens to shoot video. There were a bunch of reasons for this, which I can get to in another video if you're interested. But the biggest for me was the ability to run XLR mics straight into the camera instead of having to use an intermediary interface and recorder, and the ability to get a picture that looks pretty close to an ARRI system, but for like one-tenth the price. At first, I just stuck with my usual workflow. I'm a big believer in first learn walk, then learn fly. So I recorded standard MP4 to an SD card, color corrected it, and that was pretty much it. But one of the best things about the C200 is that it can shoot in RAW, which just like RAW in photography, captures a ton more information. So you not only get a better quality recording, you preserve a ton more options for color correction and grading. So I talked to a bunch of experts, I watched a bunch of videos, and got ready to make the switch and start recording RAW to CFast cards. But a lot of the workflows I'd heard and found involved Adobe Premiere, or even more frequently, DaVinci Resolve. And I just don't like either of their interfaces. I use, like, and really want to stay inside Final Cut Pro 10. So I adapted, I tested, I tweaked, I iterated, and I shared a lot of the work in progress on Twitter and Insta, where a lot of you were kind enough to give me your feedback, and also ask a lot of questions about the workflow I was putting together. Questions I couldn't really answer until I had something I felt was at least a little consistent. Until now. I'm Rene Ritchie, and this is how I color grade Vector. Now, I'm still very new to RAW and to this workflow, so please take it more like a workflow in progress. What I'm doing right now is a simplified hybrid of Tyler Stallman, Rubidium from the Crimson Engine, and Denver Riddle from Color Grading Central, along with a lot of back and forth with Thomas Frank and Dave Wiskus, who picked up C200s and began grading RAW about the same time I did. And one more thing before I begin, because Final Cut Pro 10 doesn't offer native support for Canon RAW Lite, you have to first go and download the plugin and install it from Canon's website, which is annoying, but at least you only have to do it once. Now, the C200 records RAW onto CFast cards, which, if you're not familiar with them, are like SD cards on Hulk Serum. And the files get big, like really big, like one or a couple hundred gigabytes per recording big. If I had one of those fancy new eight terabyte SSD drives in my 16 inch MacBook Pro, I'd just import it as is and get to work, but I don't. So I'm currently color grading right off the CFast card itself, which actually isn't that uncommon. So I create a new library, I plug the card in, spelunk down the directory structure to find the raw file, click leave files in place, and then click import. Then I make a new project, 4K 16 by nine, and get to work. Now, the recording is in C-Log, which is a flat color profile, and Final Cut Pro 10 knows that, so it automatically applies the appropriate LUT, a lookup table, to map the C-Log to a standard color profile, in this case, Rec. 709. Now, I know high dynamic range is where everything is moving to, but YouTube just doesn't support multiple dynamic ranges well enough yet for me to be able to use it without degrading the experience of like 90 plus percent of you, but hopefully one day. Personally, subjectively, I find the Canon LUT a little warm for my tastes. I could turn it off, which would return me to the flat, flat C-Log look, and I could correct contrast and saturation and then grade from there, but I do like the way the ARRI LUT looks. No surprise, since I said from the beginning that was one of the main reasons I went with the C200. So I'll typically apply the built-in version of the ARRI LUT, or the Crimson Engine and Mondobytes version of the ARRI LUT, which increasingly looks even better to me. At that point, I switch Final Cut Pro 10 to the color workspace. I've got it set up so I can see the Luma waveform, RGB overlay waveform, and the vector scope. Also, if you have an iPad with you, you can totally sidecar your workspaces, even if you're working on the road, which is terrific, or use an additional display at work or at home. To keep things simple and capturable for this though, I'm sticking to a single display. I start with color corrections because, again, I'm a firm believer in strong foundations. And so I begin by adding a color wheels adjustment. I like the wheels because you can adjust a lot of the things all at the same panel. I'll typically adjust the shadows and highlights first, so they sit at 0 and 100 on the Luma waveform, respectively. Then I'll tweak the mids and adjust from there until I get a range I like. Next, I'll tweak the saturation, starting with the mids because that's where most of the skin tone lies. And I'll use the vector form there as a guide. 
If I think there's anything wrong with the white balance, I'll go find the X-ray color checker passport reference I include at the beginning of every shoot, scale in, and make sure the neutral gray is really neutral gray according to the RGB overlay before continuing. Once I think everything looks right and properly correct, I'll switch to the grade. The difference between a color correction and a color grade is that the correction is doing exactly that, making sure the canvas is completely correct. You're starting off with the picture as close to objectively natural as the camera could possibly capture. The grade is the art you then paint onto that canvas, the stylized, subjective look you want to achieve. Think the neon green in Matrix. I'm currently working on the teal and orange look though, because it's the simplest and best documented, almost to the point of being a cliche. And again, again, I'm a firm believer in mastering the basics before getting all experimental. Now, the next part used to take me three or four separate steps and adjustment layers, but I've managed to simplify it down a lot. For the grade, I now begin with the second color wheel adjustment. Add a color mask, select the skin tones, then invert the mask. That lets me keep the skin tones as natural as possible as I push teal into the darker regions. When you toggle it on and off, you can see the difference it makes. Then I'll add a curves adjustment. Here I can tweak the contrast if I want to and push the skin tones more towards the orange if I need to or recover some of the teal out of the shadows if I need to do that. I'm also experimenting with decrushing the blacks a little, which is something I learned from my friend Mark Wim and more recently, Mondo Bites. The skin tones are something I'm still struggling with, obviously, but I feel like I'm understanding the process more and more every time I do it. Maybe in a month or so, when I'm more comfortable with the workflow, I'll save it as a preset in Final Cut Pro 10 so I can just drag and drop it onto the footage and give myself an even bigger head start out of the gate. I do wish Final Cut Pro 10 had an extra set of tools that worked more like Aperture or Lightroom or Photos with contrast and other traditional photo editing sliders because I'm super used to editing photos with those sliders, but I'm learning my way around the tools they have for now. Maybe also a set of tools like DaVinci Resolve, so people who want to switch to or stay in Final Cut Pro can feel even more at home. Once I get to the point where I'm happy with the grade, I export it as a ProRes 422 file, and when that's done, I import it back into a new Final Cut Pro 10 library and project, this time onto my SSD, and I begin to edit. That's also where I switch from 16x9 to 2x1, and I've done a whole video explaining that workflow, which I'll link in the description. So going raw has added some extra time to my workflow, but I think it makes for better video and it's letting me learn a new skill, which is invaluable to me, especially because I wanna make everything look as amazing as possible for Nebula. That's the new streaming video service I'm creating with Dave Wiskus, Thomas Frank, Legal Eagle, Tirzu, Sarah Z, CGP Grey, Lindsay Ellis, and many, many more. We're building it together because we want a place where creators can try out new content ideas that might not work on YouTube or for people who simply don't want to watch on YouTube. And because it comes bundled with CuriosityStream, which is just $19.99 a year, a year, you also get access to thousands of documentaries and series like Bright Now and the Coffee Buzz episode, where experts reveal some of the surprising secrets that make your favorite coffees taste the way they do. And believe me, this entire workflow was built so much on coffee. By signing up, you won't just be helping me out, but the entire educational community as we work together to build a place where we can create exactly the kind of content you really want us to create. Go to curiositystream.com vector for unlimited access to the world's top documentaries and nonfiction series, and now Nebula as well, and enter the promo code vector to start your membership completely free for the first 31 days. Thanks CuriosityStream, and thanks to all of you for supporting the show. Like I said, this is very much still a workflow in progress. If you have any questions or tips of your own, I'd love to hear them. So hit like if you do, subscribe if you haven't already, and color grade that bell gizmo. It's the only way YouTube will actually tell you when new videos go live. And then hit up the comments and let me know. Thank you so much for watching. See you next video.